What's going on guys, Ronut44 back with you again for another late night tutorial for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now today we're going to be taking a look in Substance Painter here on the topic of exporting textures from Substance Painter to Microsoft Flight Simulator and more specifically how to create a export preset in Substance Painter to make this process a little simpler each time you need to do it. So the export textures, you're going to go up here to the file menu and hit export textures or hit control shift E. Once you do that, this menu here is going to pop up. You're going to have your material selected over here on the side. Um, only select the materials. Of course, you want to export. It may be as simple as one material. You may have multiple materials. Typically, I just have one material. So I just have that material selected by default. Up here at the top, you have your output directory. So navigate to wherever you want your textures to export to. Select the folder. And then you have also here output template, file type, size, and padding. And these settings here, we'll talk about here more in a minute. But first and foremost, let's go up here to the top and click on the output templates tab. Now, you have a bunch of different output templates here, but you know what? We're going to create our own. So click the little plus here at the top, and it's going to drop a new preset down here at the bottom. So now, when we're thinking about what materials we need for Microsoft Flight Simulator, three immediately come to mind for PBR. You need your albedo, you need a normal, and you want a comp. So first and foremost, let's create the comp texture. So go here at the top, press R plus G plus B. That'll drop down. Go ahead and highlight that. Get rid of that. And we're going to change up the naming convention just a little bit here to make it a little bit more uniform each time we export. So just to the right of that box, click on the dollar sign. You're going to hit Texture Set. Click it. And that'll fill that in. After that, you're going to say underscore. And I'd like to type in all caps, COMP, C-O-M-P. Go back over to the dollar sign, hit UDIM, and in between comp and UDIM, you're going to type open bracket, period, and those are the uh, brackets on your number keys up there at the top of your keyboard. I don't remember if there's a specific name for them, but yeah, that's, yeah, just, I'm just calling them brackets. <laughs> I think that's right. There are many different types of brackets, though. Um... Anyways, <laughs> moving on, that's all we need to put in that box right there. So once you have that set, leave it, you're good. Now over here, you see you have the individual channels, red, green, blue for RGB. So with a comp channel or a comp material, you have um, ambient occlusion or AO in the red channel, roughness in the green channel, and metallic in the blue channel. So we need to assign each of those to a channel. So over here on the side, we're going to select Mixed AO from the very far right menu. Drop that into the red channel. Select Gray channel. Then you're going to go down this list right here. Find Roughness. Here it is. Drop that in the green channel. Also set it as a gray channel. And then last but not least for the blue, find the metallic and drop it into the blue channel. Same deal. Set as gray channel. And finishing this one off, over here at the right, instead of 16 or 8 bits, we want to select 16 bits. This is not a requirement, but it is a recommendation. And I would use 16 bits. I would not use 8 bits for this. And that's the only one of the three textures that requires it to be 16 bit. All the rest are 8. So leave it as a PNG so it's in lossless format. Now before we create our next channel, go ahead and go back over here to the name box, highlight Avery excuse me, highlight everything with control A, control C to copy, just to make our lives a little bit easier here. And now we move on to the next channel. So let's go ahead and do our normal. And this is just going to be a standard RGB channel. So click that, drop it down, same deal, go over here to the box, paste that in. And instead of having comp in this channel, go ahead and delete that in all caps, norm, for normal. Now for this RGB channel, we need to go over here to this very far right menu. We're going to click on Normal Direct X. Microsoft Flight Simulator does use 
a direct X style normal map. It does not use OpenGL. So make sure you put in DirectX and it's going to be RGB. As I said, all this information over here with the PNG and bits can stay the same. So just leave that be. Um, for the next channel is going to be Albedo. For Albedo, you can use RGB if you're not planning on having any transparency in your textures, but in the odd chance that at some point you use transparency, let's just go ahead and set it up so it has an alpha channel in it. So click on RGB plus A, and that's standard RGB texture plus an alpha channel. So once again, we should still have that uh, name on our clipboard, so let's just paste that in again. And instead of comp, we're going to say ALBD for albedo. All right, so come over here to the right hand side, select base color, and drop that into the RGB channel. You're going to hit RGB channels. And then for the alpha, you're going to go down here in the list, hit opacity, op opacity, opacity, <laughs> and then um, A channel for that. Or sorry, sorry, no, no, no. Clear channel. Opacity, gray channel. You want gray channel for that. And then we see we leave all this the same over here on the side as well. Now, as far as setting up your output template, that is it. Now, if you want to rename this, you can right click on it, rename, whatever. MSFS. Uh, we'll just leave it as that. We'll just leave it MSFS. All right. Now that we have everything set up, let's go back over to our settings tab. Now, we've already set our output directory, but what we need to do now is set our template that we just made. So scroll all the way down here to the bottom, select MSFS, which is selecting this template here that we just created. And then file type, you should save that as PNG or keep it as PNG so it's all lossless. And then I like to use 8 bits plus dithering. Um, size. Size you can say based on each texture size, set size, and that'll just be whatever you had under your texture set settings over here. If you set it to 2048 or 4096 or whatever, it's going to take on that texture set size. If you, now, if you want to force it to a higher or lower texture set size, you can do that here, and you can go all the way up to an 8K. But for now, let's just leave it as based on each texture set size because I think I got it set to 4096 for this model. Um, as far as the padding, leave it at dilation infinite and this is just basically stretching the outer edges of your UVs to fill in the space in between your UV maps. Go ahead and hit export. Get those textures exported. Let it take a few minutes to export. And then once it is done, you're simply going to click the save settings down here at the bottom, save settings, save your project, and all of that is going to be locked in for the next time you open this project or if you start up a new project and want to export. You just go through half that process, right? So up the file, export textures, and all you need to do now is select the template you made from this output template and configure these to your liking and hit export. Anyways guys, thanks for following along with this tutorial. Hopefully it helped you out. I'll have some more tutorial videos and tips coming out here pretty soon. But until then, like the video if you did, leave a comment if you have any questions, and as always, have a great rest of your day. Roadnut44, over and out.